something magnificently beautiful about it and magical. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, it's me Mick And I'm Willow Today you've joined us, we are at right, I think we're just in the Yeah, I think it's out to go to Thirsk Do you believe around the corner from Sutton Bank we're On a nice little forest walk here yeah? We've found a little park up I'm um, right, I see a little park where it's absolutely chock a block so I had, to, I had to wait for a little bit for the some cyclists to put the, the bikes back away and drive off and then pull in while we had the opportunity, while we had the chance. It's a nice little forest walk here. Yeah. Oh, there's a squirrel. What the fuck? Can I not even play with me nuts and peace, man? Wow. Bless. But you know what is, I, I, I keep saying I'm going to stop bringing the bike out and I never do and then we'll get to somewhere like this and think, I think. Why didn't I bring the bike? We've had the van serviced this week, so she's running a little bit smoothly. I don't know when the last time she had a service was, but thanks to my mate Brad the mechanic, cheers Brad, she's had a air filter change, oil filter, and new oil, so you know she's had the whole shebangs done. But the, oil, the air filter man, oh god, I think it was the original air filter that came with the van when she was first ever bought. How old is she? 57 plate, so she's 16. She's 16 year old, I don't, God knows when the last time she had a service was. She's been meaning to service it for a while, she's never had the funds. Now she's been serviced, she's got a little bit, a couple of jobs to do on her, like her brakes and stuff like that, but, you know, she looks after us, she keeps us safe. I think it's only right that we look after Bertha. So we're just going to have a wander around here, see what you because tomorrow we're hopefully oh, going to, um, the yeah, we're going to go to the Birds of Prey Centre. Which is in Thirsk. Looking on the thing, things to do in Thirsk. Apparently one of the things to do in Thirsk is go for a forest walk. We like walking. Yeah, yeah. We love walking. We love seeing what's about. We like forests. So we'll have a wander around. See what the crack is. And we'll catch you back at the van. Back at the van. So all the way we were walking we were for about an hour, realised this path the way that we were following just goes on forever. <laughs> so we for about an hour, so I will start heading back. But what I really wanted to see through there was a deer, because I love seeing anything like that, you know, we're in the woods and the walk and we never seen one. And literally just as we started approaching the van, we all our spots a deer. So I'm very blessed to see that. Love, love anything like that. But my bum's hurting now. I went to the seafront yesterday with the, with the Grand Bay and so I took them down the seafront. I actually built some awesome sand castles, like this one. And that one. And we had some fun in the way. We had some fun in the, in the water. And that. And yeah, so I had some fun in the water and that. And, but the whole getting down and getting up and getting down and getting up, doing sand castles or digging holes for the bay to stick his legs in. I'm getting up this morning and me bomb cheeks. Wow. So they're a little bit tender, a little bit sore. Have some tea? Yeah, I have some tea I think. <laughs> it's just cracking. <laughs>
guys. Oh, I will say, well, it's been a beautiful place. It is a noisy, noisy, right? It's not, it's, it's not so much that it's been noisy, but it's a very, very busy park up. It wasn't until about nine, ten o'clock, was it? I know people were still like on their bikes and that. Biking, it's like a bike, biking trail thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely more for bikers. It's obviously, there's loads of dog walkers, but the amount of bikers that are coming through. And like from early in the morning, I didn't realise like it was such a... Oh, there was a school trip as well, wasn't there? Yeah, there's been a big coach pull up this morning with loads of kids on. But all night, man, also, it's just probably some people getting the bikes out, bikes in, slamming doors. Not slamming doors, but shutting doors, closing doors. And when you're in a small confined space like this, because it's, the park, it's not that big, big of a park up. So we just chilled out. We watched, we've started watching that manifest on Netflix. It's good, it's really good. It has me so tight in like in a point. So I was like, well, can you tell this is like acting? Yeah, that you know what I mean? shit, that some of that acting shit in it. Like, I woke up in a lush place this morning, like, like mentally and physically. That's Shilajit's kicking in right then, isn't it? I love Shilajit. I swear by Shilajit. I wish the Shilajit affected me like that. It gets us right in my heart, isn't it? Like, it's for hormones and stuff, but energy, like, it gives you your energy as well. Like, it's it's got so many minerals and everything in it, but, mm, like, It's because my stomach's not absorbing stuff. It just makes my heart go, wow! It goes massive. <laughs> and I just feel so much life. So today's plans, anyway, we are going to go and have a look at this bird of prey centre <coughs> and see some birds of prey. Go and have a look at this falcon place. What the fuck is that? I wish the sun would come falcon out. I know, like, my Where's tans, the summer gone, my tans man? fading. So, let's go and have a, a falcon awesome day. Surprise for pulling up here, pulls into the bird of prey centre and right in the corner was a peacock. Beautiful spirit message. I want to make a couple because they've got a shown on it, half one. They're doing a half eleven, half one, half three. They do like a display thing, so we've got about an hour and a half before the display is on. So we're just going to make a couple hang about a bit and then catch the display as well. Hopefully anyway, that's the plan is. You say hopefully a lot, just have the leaf. The leaf. Bay leaf, so there'll be a little buzzy bay and then a leaf. Bay leaf. <laughs> You've definitely overdosed on Shilajit this morning, haven't you? <laughs> Let's see what this place has to offer.
Wesley, Howard Mayle, Whitehead and Vulture, join the team. Thanks, too. And Andrew Tony are on the smaller side, and they're fully aware of that. So they will catch and kill live prey, such as African hares, African hedgehogs, other birds, quite partial to a guinea fan, or rogue flies as well, hoping for a bit of roadkill. But they will be on the edge of the carcass, not in the hustle and bustle. Then the riverbanks and the African fish eagle will fly over the top of the riverbank, causing chaos. Normally, one will be caught in flight, and then the eagle can land and hopefully catch him. Or hopefully, yeah. Yeah. well, so keep going, Albie. Keep going. Oh, don't oh. Well. Uh, so Ian, we've had custom made, ready for this part of the show, um, and we should be joined by hopefully a few vultures. Uh, I am going to hand over to uh, well, to, to someone else to do the commentary. You may recognise uh, this gentleman's voice. And, uh, well, anyway, let's see what happens. Favourable conservation status, meaning that they're at risk of going extinct. Poisoning is the biggest threat facing vulture populations in Africa. It's currently the biggest cause of vulture mortality, which together have accounted for 90% of reported deaths. Sadly, at this rate, the average time to extinction could be 50 to 60 years. We have sadly reached the end of our show. The team at Thirsk Birds at Prey Centre would like to thank each and every one of you for joining us here today. The team are hoping to raise funds and awareness for those birds that are in much need of our help. If you have enjoyed the show and would like to make a donation, however big or small, we will be forever grateful for helping save our world. We can create a place where nature is protected, valued and loved. Hopefully you've enjoyed what you have seen. I think we're about there. We've got Delta Lima's up here with me, Dave. Typical Lima. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so Lima, though, she came to us out of a uh, breeding program. Um, so she's come here to fly. And so hopefully you've enjoyed it. Have a look around. There is no rush to leave us. Ask the staff any questions. We are more than happy to answer. Uh, best we can. Uh, but if you do want to come and see us in the future, please do. Uh, we're running the African show to the 10th of September, seven days a week, uh, weather permitting. Oh, brilliant, though. Yeah, but it, it just, but it's just when the music starts playing and the, the birds start flying around, and if you just want to well up, and there's something magnificent and beautiful about it, and magical. It is absolutely amazing. The work to do here is because we're not one for seeing animals in captivity. Um, I don't like seeing animals in captivity. But what they do here is, you know, if they weren't in captivity, it's a they'd, they'd be. Yeah. As well, isn't it? Like a breeding yeah. program and 
you know, what's, what do I look after? You know, it's amazing, man. You've got another one and a half three, so I don't know where that stick about. And what's a half three one? There's different ones and a half three, so we'll see what happens. Well, is this big? So, Cornelius has the lovely little ear tufts on the top of his head. Those ear tufts are just tufts of feather. His ears are located on the side of his head. Uh, but the technical name for those ear tufts is plumy corns. As he makes his way around the arena, you may notice he does a bit of a funky dance. Yeah. The reason for his head movement is due to his eyes being so big they're fixed into his socket. We can't keep his head still to look like he might not have a dog hand. The wrong way, have a good view of the bench, the barrier, the post, the surrounding area. Have a good level, check the different angles. <laughs> So I think the nicest way we can describe Cornelius is basically he's not a problem solver, but still good at what he does. <laughs> so Cornelius will now show us the typical method of hunting. It's called perch and pan. To do this, we need him up on the wall. We do this every day, and every day we still have to point to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> right, well so what we need to imagine is that he's high up in a tree or rocky outcrop surveying the land. He's waiting for prey to come to him. Little Jack Rabbit runs across the arena. He sees it, the chest pretty hungry, no scary predators, and all that he has to do is simply take off, swoop, and pant. So any second you'll see the movement, that's the swoop, and finally the pant. So that one is Sydney. And Sydney is a beautiful goshawk. So goshawks, they are um, fantastic. They are very popular in the voluntary industry, in the hunting industry. Uh, very proactive hunters will tackle prey two, three times uh, their actual weight. Um, so uh, Sydney's a male, so he's weighing in today at one pound seven. Uh, females two and a half, three pounds in weight. So depending what we were hunting, uh, Sydney, because he's a male, would be hunting hopefully rabbits. Uh, females, well, they'd be hunting pheasants and even possibly hares as well. Right. So, uh, so yeah, they are very highly strung and also very proactive hunters. Wow. You don't often find a goshawk flying in displays for that reason. Uh, but anyway, keeping it so dead simple today, nothing too complex. Uh, but no, he is a brilliant little chap and has been for, for a very long time. Uh, Sydney used to be a hunting bird and uh, apparently was brilliant. A fantastic hunting bird, been there, done that, caught everything. Uh, it turns out it was a load of rubbish, the only thing he caught was a con. So it's brilliant to fly such an elusive British bird of prey. Their numbers are slowly oh, yes. on the up, slowly actually, they're on the up quite massively. Uh, goshawks are found in dense woodlands, very manoeuvrable, very agile birds, hunting rabbits, pigeons, jackdaws, jays, woodcocks as well, uh, grouse depending on location, or squirrel as well, as well, throw that in. I'd like to show you how well camouflaged this bird is, he practically disappears, and this is why we have the bells on him, it's the medieval way of tracking birds of prey. So, um, hey, you know, especially in the medieval times, you've gone, you've searched, you've managed to trap a bird after days and weeks of trying to catch that bird. Or you've got the easy option, climb a nest and take a young chick, but you still have to train it. And after all that effort, you do not want to lose that bird. So they put the bells on. We carry on with that practice so we can hear roughly where the birds are when they're in the trees. Um, so we can get a bit of close range tracking. But uh, we have progressed and we now have a GPS system. Turns out that ours doesn't work. So, uh, Dave. Barley is now 10, nearly 11 years old. Doing very well. We also have Spike. Uh, Spike is Barley's older brother and is now 17 years old. Both of them have outlived the wildlife expectancy of a British barn owl, which would be four to six years. In the wild, it's tough. Limited food, bad weather, risk of injury through hunting and breeding season, been eaten by other birds of prey and four-legged predators. It's tough. Under human care, these birds have guaranteed food, heat lamps, heated perches, 
avian medicine, and even radio too. They're also known as the sunny owl, the golden owl, the monkey-faced owl, and the screech owl. And I don't want to confuse matters, there is a bird called the screech owl. These purely have the nickname, and for a beautiful bird, they do make a rather horrid noise. Oh. Very good. <laughs> So the screeching is a positive, not a negative, by the way. Again, Dave has hand and barley, barley season as mum and dad, the food supply. So it's a greeting. He's making sure we're aware that he's around and that he's ready to come out and do his bit. If he wasn't screeching, we would be concerned, thinking is he ill, is he unhappy, or is he scared? But today, it's all good. But before Barley heads home, Dave has been encouraging this bird to show us some natural behaviour. And that is to hover or storm. We give it to Barley just to keep him entertained and also gives Dave a chance to get a bit further away. And we'll see if we can get this hover. And I'll be very honest, we have done very well with our hovering. Flying has been beautiful, really, really beautiful. Uh, the hovering hasn't really been a good thing. I think we are well over to Barley. I'm chasing him. Oh, he's chasing him. Oh, he's chasing him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant, eh? Yeah. yeah! And these birds are problem solvers. They are meant to be intelligent birds. Bonnie can't see the pieces of food underneath the blocks of wood, but she knows they're there. Run over, use her feet to turn over the block of wood, get the reward. Right, there you go. There's the touch. Run back. One more. Oh, right. oh, we got there in the end. So, what we wanted to do to show the Bonnie is how they would use feet and beak to gain. And over the last year, this bird will use her feet, some days more enthusiastically than others, but she will use her feet. Over the last year, this bird has not used her beak once. Not once. Instead, what she loves to do, and I think it's her favourite part of the routine, so I'm going to start shaking in excitement, is where she simply jumps in the buckets, <laughs> which proves absolutely nothing. Well, and the fact it's taken a year for that. <laughs> Brilliant. So, it's that, it's time to go home. You might be boring, I'm off. <laughs> so, it is time for her to go home. Sometimes it can take a bit of time, today clearly not. Uh, the only to reason that she can be a little bit slow going home is that she understands people eat on the picnic benches. Quavers, skittles, fairy cakes get dropped underneath. This is Peanut. Peanut is a red-footed falcon. Her centre was based in Chester and sadly did not survive the lockdown. So the gentleman that owned Peanut was also leaving the bird and prey feed. But he wanted her to go somewhere where she would be flown and people have experienced flying. At the time, we were not looking at taking on any more birds. We were in the same position. We needed to make sure we could hopefully survive the lockdown. So we anyway, kept asking and we said, we thought, well, you know, when you've got only 90 birds, what's 91 or 92? And then we looked at Peanut and her food intake really wasn't going to be that much, was it? Well, Peanut has been here ever since and she has been a joy to have, I think, a beautiful little bird. And they're found across Europe. Uh, they will migrate into Africa for their winter holidays. Sadly, a bird that is slowly uh, decreasing in numbers. This is due to a few factors. This is due to loss of habitat. Uh, they are also uh, struggling uh, for prey. But the main issue is that they will nest in abandoned rook and crow nests. Well, in this case, with the red-footed falcon, we know Peanut's a female. She's got a lovely orangey chest with a blue barring on her back. The males are all blue with bright red feet. And that's where the name red-footed falcon comes from. But just before Peanut heads home, these birds don't typically fly like a peregrine falcon, which is a non-stop aerial pursuit. They fly more like a common kestrel. Swoop a dive, a quick hover, and a dive again. Now 22 years old, and doing rather well. And for this display, we should be joined by Mully. That was an entrance, Mully. I was going down to the path, but anyway. <laughs> so, uh, yes, Mully's the male, weighing in today at 8 pounds, so 7, 7 and a half foot wingspan. The females, they weigh at 10 pounds, pushing an 8 foot wingspan. And what we're hoping to encourage from this eagle today is something called natural free flying. Natural free flying is that jazzed up way of saying, go off and fly. So we just have to see what happens. 
And uh, well, one of two things will happen. Yeah, I'm going to ask him to jump onto this log, it's his starting point. And from here, uh, he can either take off into the prevailing wind and start flying, which is brilliant. Second thing, he can land on the floor and refuse. <laughs> Not so brilliant. <laughs> so, down to him. Southerly wind today, or southerly slash a bit of westerly. Either way, not bad wind direction. Nice little bit of breeze there, nothing too hard work for him. So we'll see what he wants to do. At the moment, he's scavenging, yes. He's using delay tactics at the moment. Now, we've worked together for a very long time, Molly. Oh, I can see. My typical scavenger, it's the tiniest bit of fluff. There, but well, you managed to see it, didn't you? Well done. Natural free flying. Well, like I said, it's always, you never know how it's going to go. Uh, the birds, they can drift away. They can range away from the centre. Uh, quite often, this bird will fly above the main road. I can imagine people driving along, not realising we're here, going, hey, look, look at that. That's a big crow, isn't it? <laughs> so he'll also fly above the village. I can imagine people in the village walking their dogs, going, come here, Fluffy, you'll be all right. But he will scavenge. Wow. Fishing eagles are um, our big scavengers. Why not? If it's dead, drop down and eat it. And this guy is no wow. different. He sees a bit of dead rabbit, but a crow, but a pigeon, he will drop down and eat it. Doesn't mean we've lost him. Just means 20, 30 minutes later, he'll come back home dead happy because he's eaten half a rabbit. He absolutely stinks. I've just been dead for about three weeks. I have reason to, but otherwise I don't. Uh, that's their chance to fly, so they come in when they want to. Um, and that could be a couple of minutes, it could be 20 minutes, a couple of hours, it's down to there. Uh, today he's gone out, had a bit of play in that breeze and thought, yeah, I want to come home. He's fit, he's healthy, has a very easy life here. So what I'm asking him to do is go off and fly. What you will see is his protest. There we go. So you may have seen him, fl see him flick his feet in my direction. That's him going, I hate you. And it's all because I've asked him to fly. How horrible am I? <laughs> right, keep going, lazy boy. Very lazy today. <laughs> so anyway, there you go, Molly. You got your bit and you got your finish there. So I'm afraid he is the last bird in this display. Hopefully you've enjoyed what you have seen. Uh, any questions, please ask. I'm glad we stayed for that second bit of show, for the for the, for the yeah, other show. So that eagle thing is amazing. Oh, massive, the uh, white-tailed eagle. You get a bit of a shock when you see them perched, but when they're flying with the wingspan open and you, or you see them on somebody's arm, that's when you kind of realise how big they are. I'm going to have just one more last walk around, have a dig of the birds while they're getting them back out and then head back to the van and find somewhere to stay the night.
And then you start the park up here. I believe it's next to the Codpec Reservoir, which is just up there. And then you put the river, river running behind where This is getting ready, cracking on, cooking tea. Ooh, ooh. It's a nice little place, it's a beautiful place. It's, it's nice and quiet and very picturesque. I'm so glad we uh, went to that. All the times we've passed the Birds of Prey Centre, we've never and really. We're like, ooh, ooh, we have to go high. And I'm so glad we did, big because it's. It was phenomenal. It yeah. was reducing with the tears. It was beautiful. It's the fact of how intelligent they are as oh, well. And... So like animal, the animal kingdom is beyond clever. Mm -hmm. Like they just want to, they can just interact with humans and everything. I mean, obviously, some most of them well, they've had them from babies and done the mm -hmm. the stuff with them from babies, but. Oh. I don't know. Owls and. Oh. It's beautiful, beautiful animal. I'm so blessed. And you know, like, we've done the Water Kingdom. We did, like, the Sea World thing. We've done the Water Kingdom. We've done the Animals of the Air. And that, and that kept, like, the thing that I'm loving about it is, like, the love and the appreciation that the humans give them animals. Like, yeah, definitely. They're, like, with them, to, like, from morning till night, giving them the best possible lives they can give them. The staff and, was amazing, like, weren't they? The staff, the staff were, were absolutely amazing. brilliant. Such beautiful people. And the connection they've got with the animal, with the birds as the well. They've worked with them for like twenty plus years, and that. So I didn't. I, don't know, I think I didn't realise how long birds of prey like actually mm. live for. Thank you so much for joining me this week. And if you like what and you see, them always. If you like what you see, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and ring on the bell. Ding a ling a ling. And we'll catch you guys next time. <laughs> you fart again. Michael, don't do it. <laughs> it was a really quiet one, the phone wouldn't pick it up. Give it a bit. <laughs>